Now let us compare graphical robot C programs with text-based robot C programs. Let's start up graphical robot C and we'll just check the environment. The compiler target will probably make virtual worlds. Um, the platform type is Lego AV3, which will be handy. Yep, that'll be fine. So let's open up a standard graphical robot C program. Open the sample programs. We'll go to simple behaviors and open that folder. And we'll open the forward and backwards one. That's a straightforward, simple program. Okay, three lines. It will send our robot in the virtual environment forward for three seconds at 50% power. Our robot will wait for two seconds and our robot will then go backwards for three seconds at 50% power. Now that's our graphical robot C program. Let's take a look at the equivalent in text-based robot C. We go up to view and one of the options is convert graphical file to text. We'll click on that one and we get all of this. We'll ignore the top part for the moment. That just describes the robot. We'll deal with that later. And But now we will look at this part. This is the text-based robot C that will send our robot forward for three seconds at 50% power. We'll wait two seconds. And in our virtual environment, our robot will go backwards for three seconds at 50% power. Now let's actually directly uh, compare these two Robot C formats. This is graphical Robot C code. This is text-based Robot C code. Now if we look at these, they're very similar. See the forward command? Forward 3 seconds 50, forward 3 seconds 50 in the text-based. Very similar. Same with wait commands. Wait 2 seconds. Wait 2 seconds for the graphical robot C, backwards C, 3 seconds, 50. For the text-based robot C, backwards 3 seconds, 50. Very similar. But we've got an extra bit at the beginning of the text-based robot C and another bit at the end of the text-based robot C, which is necessary. Now, we've got these things. They're really called braces or curly braces. There's a bit of confusion about this. Those square things are called brackets, the round ones are called parentheses, and the angle ones are called angle brackets. Now, let us look at how to run this text-based Robot C program. We'll check a couple of things first. Um, we'll check that the robot compiler, uh, compiler target is virtual worlds, it is. We'll check the Lego uh, platform type is EV3. It is. Okay, so that's good. So just like before we go to robot, uh, oh, one more thing to check. Since we're going to the virtual world, we want to check the select the virtual world to use. We're using the challenge pack for EV3. Good. Now, we compile and download the program. we get this particular window come up. We click on login locally. Um, we type in our local username and password and we'll click on login locally. Now we have to use choose a table. Um, since this is just a test, we might choose the utility table, the brown ones, and a metric distance. That's just a table with long metric distances on, and we can start the challenge. Okay, uh, there's our table. We click on the start button to start the Robot C program, and our robot goes forwards just as we hoped. It waits and then comes back for three seconds just as we hoped. Good. But we want to find also a bit more about the robot. Remember, we said that we'd look at this later. This is what defines the robot. And let's look at that next. 
let us look at the robot itself. Now, if we went up to robots up the top here, we come to this. Now, we've been using an EV3, and we have this mapping here. The arm motors are port A and so on, port B. Let us compare the sensor mappings. We've got the graphical robot C on the right, and we've got the text-based robot C up the top here. Now, first of all, we can see um, there's a touch sensor, which is down here for the graphical robot C. The way we describe it in text-based robot C is up the top here. Touch sensor, sensor touch. It's in slot one, okay? And the color sensor, which we call a light sensor, in the graphical robot C is a color sensor up here in slot S3. S3 here and port 3 down here. For the motors, we have the left motor in port B here in graphical. In text-based, we have up here motor port B left motor. Okay. For the right motor on graphical described here, we've got the right motor up here. Now you'd think with all of this there'd be a lot of typing, but not necessarily so. We'll show you how to use the motor and sensor setup to change this. Now we've got an arm motor. What we'll do is to change this arm motor to no motor, and we'll change that gyro sensor to no sensor. Okay. So we go up and click on motor and sensor setting. And uh, you see, we've got this particular robot at the moment, and we've got those standard settings, but we can change those. Let's go to arm motor. We can change that to no motor. <clears throat> you know, so we got NXT, EV3, large or small, no motor, and we can change that one to no motor. Uh, <laughs> oh dear. No motor. Right. That's just the name. This is the one which changes to no motor, really. And we'll leave the others as they are. Left motor and right motor. Large EV3 motors. Our sensors. We've got a touch sensor, a gyro sensor, a color and ultrasonic. We don't know what a gyro sensor is. We haven't tried that yet. So let's change that to no sensor. And we'll change the name to no sensor to stop ourselves getting confused. We'll go down, we'll apply that, and we'll click OK. And here it's written this for us. You notice the what was a gyro sensor is now no sensor, sensor none. And what was an arm motor is now no motor. And so we go ahead and uh, we can use this motor and sensor setup to change this first part, which describes what, how all the sensors are connected and to which slots they're connected in our particular robot. We can convert other files the same way. Suppose we opened another sample program, turn left and right, perhaps. And this will be turn left for two seconds at 50% power wait one second, turn right 3,500 milliseconds at 75% power. A millisecond is one one thousandth of a second. And so 3,500 milliseconds is equivalent to 3.5 seconds or three and one half seconds. Wait one second. And we can convert that the same way as we've done before. View and convert graphical file to text. And we come to our new program. Um, turn left two seconds at 50% power. Wait one second. Turn right 3,500 milliseconds at 75% power. That's 3.5 seconds or three and a half seconds at 75% power and wait one second. Now, this would be fine, but suppose 
we wanted to start with this. Okay. If we look at our sample programs, they're all graphical robot C sample programs. So one way we can get out of this is to close everything down and start off from the text-based robot C icon. So let's close this down. So far, we've started up using graphical robot C for Lego Mindstorms. And all of the examples we had in that were in graphical robot C. Suppose we want to start up with the text-based robot C instead of, and look at the examples which are in uh, text-based robot C, we'd start up from this icon. Okay, so let's click on that and we'll start up and we come up to something that looks pretty much the same. We'll go through the same check as we did before. The compiler targets will change to virtual worlds. Uh, we'll check that the platform type is LEGO EV3. It is. Yep. Uh, it will also work for LEGO NXT. We want to check the virtual worlds to use. We're challenge pack for EV3. That's good. And <clears throat> now, if we want to use a sample program, look at a sample program, we can go down for the file menu and the open sample program, just as we did before for graphical robot C. This time, however, we suggest you look at natural language. Okay, and if we look at natural language, um, We've got a selection of programs here, which will be in natural language text-based robot C, uh, simpler form than the complete robot C, the text-based robot C. Let's look at simple behaviors. And again, will be familiar. Okay, so we've got our program that we've looked at before forward three seconds, 50%, wait two seconds, and backwards three seconds, 50%. Now you see, in this case, we've got not so much up here. We've got the standard EV3 Rembot. And if we look at this, we'll see it's assumed that everything is the same way that it is here. We've looked at the motors, the arm motors, left and right motors, the sensors, are the same as they were in our previous graphical robot C. And because we've looked at that, it's brought the whole thing up. It, because we've looked at this, it assumes we might have changed something. We didn't actually. And that's the same program as we get if we transfer that across from graphical robot C. But in this case, we start up with this natural language version of text-based robot C. And all of these sample programs, um, we can click on natural language up here. All of these will be in the natural language form of robot C. Okay, so that's how we can start up the program if we want all our examples to be in the natural language version of text-based robot C. And we'd run that exactly the same as we ran it before. Okay, so that's how we'd get to the sample programs in the natural language form of text-based robot C without having to convert from graphical robot C. We will now close everything down and thank you for watching our video.